you just ran a speed test. 300 megabits per second. Your internet is absolutely screaming. You paid good money for this connection. And yet, here you are, trying to watch the new season of The Last of Us in glorious 4K. And that spinning buffering circle shows up every five minutes like some kind of digital curse. What gives? Here's what nobody tells you about internet speed. That number you see on your speed test, it's lying to you. Not because the test is wrong, but because that's not actually what matters when you're trying to stream 4K video without wanting to throw your remote through the TV. In the next 15 minutes, you're going to understand why faster internet doesn't automatically mean smoother streaming. And more importantly, you're going to know exactly what's really causing those buffering issues and how to actually fix them. Because here's the uncomfortable truth. Most people are solving the wrong problem entirely. Picture this scenario. It's Friday night, you've got snacks ready, new movie just dropped on Netflix, you click play, select that beautiful 4K option, and settle in. 30 seconds later, buffering. You check your speed test again, still showing 200 megabits, you restart your router, still buffering, you curse at your internet provider, nothing changes. Sound familiar? Here's what's really happening. Everyone tells you that more bandwidth equals better streaming. Get faster internet, they say. Upgrade your plan. But that's not what actually happens. What really happens is your super fast internet is delivering data to your house just fine. The problem is what happens to that data after it gets there. Think about it like this. Imagine you ordered a pizza delivery. The driver gets to your neighborhood in five minutes flat. Super fast, right? But then he can't find parking. Then your doorbell doesn't work. Then he has to wait while you dig around for cash. The delivery speed to your street was incredible. But the pizza still arrives cold because everything else went wrong. That's your internet connection right now. And this matters because you're wasting money upgrading your internet speed when speed isn't even your problem. It's not just about buffering being annoying. It's about understanding that the entire way we think about internet performance is backwards. We've been sold this idea that megabits per second is the magic number. But that number barely tells you anything about your actual streaming experience. So let's talk about what's really going on inside your network when you try to stream 4K video. There's this thing I call the Wi-Fi lottery. And it's probably the biggest reason your streaming keeps buffering even though your internet is fast. Here's how it works. Your router is like a radio station broadcasting data through your walls. Every device in your house is trying to tune into that signal. But here's what makes this particularly tricky. Wi-Fi isn't a direct connection. It's radio waves bouncing around your space, fighting through walls and interference, and competing with every other Wi-Fi network in your apartment building. Your speed test runs for about 10 seconds. During those 10 seconds, conditions might be perfect. No interference, clear signal. Boom, 300 megabits. But then you start streaming. That's not a 10 second test. That's 20 minutes of continuous data flow. And during those 20 minutes, a thousand things can mess with your Wi-Fi signal. Your neighbor turns on their microwave. Your signal drops for three seconds. Someone in your house walks between your TV and the router. Brief interference. Your phone automatically starts backing up photos to iCloud. Now you're competing for bandwidth. Each of these micro interruptions is tiny. Your speed test would never catch them. But streaming? Streaming catches every single one. This matters because 4K video needs consistent data flow, not just fast data flow. A 4K stream uses about 25 megabits per second. That's way less than your 300 megabit connection. But if that 25 megabits gets interrupted for even two seconds, your buffer runs dry, that's when you see the spinning circle. Think about Marcus trying to fill a bucket with water. He's got a fire hose with incredible pressure. 300 gallons per minute, more than enough water. But the hose keeps kinking up for a split second every 30 seconds. The bucket still runs dry because consistent flow matters more than raw volume. Your Wi-Fi is that kinked hose. Now here's where things get even more interesting. There's another pattern most people completely miss. I call it the latency trap. Everyone obsesses over download speed. How many megabits per second can you pull down? But streaming isn't just about download speed. It's about how quickly your device can communicate back and forth with Netflix's servers. That's called latency. And latency is measured in milliseconds, not megabits. Here's what's actually happening behind the scenes. 
When you stream video, your TV isn't just downloading a file, it's having a constant conversation with the streaming server. Your TV says, I need the next chunk of video. The server responds with that chunk. Your TV confirms it received the chunk, back and forth, thousands of times during your movie. If each of those round trips takes 50 milliseconds instead of 10 milliseconds, everything slows down. Not because your download speed is slow, but because the conversation is sluggish. It's like texting someone who takes 30 seconds to respond to every message. The actual typing is fast. But the conversation crawls. Your speed test doesn't measure this properly. It's testing a straight download in ideal conditions. But streaming is this complex dance of requests and responses. And if your connection has high latency or something called jitter, which is when latency keeps changing unpredictably, your stream stutters even though your raw speed looks great. This is why you can have blazing fast internet but terrible streaming. You're measuring the wrong thing entirely. But wait, there's more. And this one really gets overlooked. There's this issue I call the hardware bottleneck. And it explains why your neighbor with slower internet somehow streams perfectly while you're over here buffering with your premium connection. Your smart TV has a processor inside it, a little computer brain that decodes video data and displays it on screen. 4K video is incredibly complex data. Each frame is basically 8 million pixels that need to be processed and displayed 60 times per second. That requires serious computational power. Now think about this. When did you buy your TV? If it's more than four years old, there's a good chance that processor is struggling with modern 4K streams. Not because it can't technically play 4K, but because streaming services keep improving their compression algorithms. They pack more detail into the same bandwidth, that makes your internet usage more efficient, but it also means your TV processor has to work harder to unpack that data. Same thing with your router. That device sitting in your closet? It's also a computer. It's routing data packets, managing multiple device connections, handling encryption. If you've got an older router, it might physically max out trying to process all that data traffic even if your internet connection is delivering way more bandwidth than the router can handle. Here's the thing that makes this particularly sneaky. These bottlenecks don't show up on a speed test. Your speed test measures the connection between your house and the internet. It doesn't measure whether your TV can actually process the video fast enough. It doesn't measure whether your router's processor is overheating trying to handle 12 connected devices. You see this when someone has a brand new TV and a modern router and suddenly all their streaming problems vanish, even though they kept the same internet plan. The internet speed was never the problem. The hardware handling that speed was the problem. Plus, there's this thing that happens with streaming apps themselves. Your Netflix app on your smart TV is software software that needs updates. If your TV software is outdated, the streaming app might not be optimized for current 4K standards. It's trying to play new video formats with old playback technology. That creates stuttering and buffering that has nothing to do with your internet speed whatsoever. And here's the sneakiest part of all. Your internet service provider might be deliberately messing with your streaming. This is called throttling, and it's more common than you think. Here's how it works. Your ISP can identify what kind of data you're using. They can see when you're streaming video versus browsing websites versus downloading files. Some ISPs deliberately slow down video streaming traffic during peak hours. Not your entire connection, just the streaming part. Why would they do this? Because video streaming uses massive amounts of bandwidth. If everyone in your neighborhood is streaming 4K Netflix at 8 p.m. on a Friday, that puts huge strain on the ISP's local infrastructure, so they slow down streaming traffic to manage the load. But they don't slow down your speed test traffic, because they know you'll run a speed test to check if something's wrong. So you run your test. Looks great. Must be something wrong with your TV or Netflix, right? Nope. Your ISP is selectively throttling just the streaming data, and your speed test never catches it because speed test traffic isn't being throttled. This matters because you could have the fastest internet plan in the world and your ISP is just going to throttle your streaming anyway during busy times. It's not about the speed you're paying for, it's about how your ISP manages different types of traffic. Wild, right? But here's what nobody wants to admit. This whole problem exists because we've been asking the wrong question from the start. The question isn't, is my internet fast enough? 
The question is, is my entire network chain optimized for sustained data flow? Think about everything we've uncovered. Your Wi-Fi signal bouncing around your house with micro interruptions. Your latency creating communication delays with streaming servers. Your TV processor struggling to decode complex video. Your router maxing out managing multiple devices. Your ISP selectively throttling streaming traffic. That speed test number you see, it's measuring one single link in a complex chain. It's like checking if your car's engine is powerful enough without looking at your tires, your transmission, your fuel system, or whether the road has potholes. What's actually happening is this. Streaming 4K video requires every part of your network to work together smoothly. You need consistent Wi-Fi signal without interruption. You need low latency for quick server communication. You need capable hardware that can decode the video efficiently. You need your ISP to not be throttling your traffic. And you need all of this to work perfectly, continuously for the entire length of your movie. One weak link anywhere in that chain and you get buffering. Even if your raw internet speed is incredible. This isn't about your internet being slow. It's about your entire streaming pipeline having multiple potential failure points. And most people are only checking one of those points and wondering why the problem won't go away. Let me tell you about two different people dealing with this exact issue. There's Sarah. Sarah's been fighting with buffering for six months now. She's paying for gigabit internet, 1,000 megabits per second. Her speed tests are insane. She's called her internet provider three times. They keep telling her everything looks fine on their end. She's restarted her router probably 50 times. Nothing helps. Here's what Sarah doesn't realize. Her TV is from 2018. It technically supports 4K, but the processor inside is struggling with modern streaming codecs. Her router is positioned behind her TV stand, surrounded by electronics that create interference. She's streaming over Wi-Fi because she never considered running an Ethernet cable, and she's trying to stream during peak evening hours when her ISP is throttling video traffic. Sarah keeps focusing on that speed test number. She sees 1,000 megabits and thinks, this should work perfectly. But she's missing four different bottlenecks that have nothing to do with her internet speed. She's solving for the wrong variable completely. Now compare that to Alex. Alex has the exact same internet plan Sarah has. Same provider, same speeds. But Alex isn't getting any buffering. What's Alex doing differently? Alex ran an Ethernet cable from his router directly to his TV. No Wi-Fi interference, no signal drops, just a stable, direct connection. His TV is from last year with a current-gen processor that handles modern codecs easily. He positioned his router in a central, open location with good ventilation. And when he noticed his ISP was throttling streaming, he switched to a different provider that doesn't engage in that practice. Alex doesn't have faster internet than Sarah. He has a better understanding of what actually matters for streaming. Instead of obsessing over speed test results, he optimized every link in the chain. He understood that consistent flow beats raw speed every single time. Notice how Alex isn't doing anything particularly complicated. He's not some network engineer. He just recognized that streaming quality isn't about megabits per second. It's about creating a stable, end-to-end -end connection with minimal interruption points. That's the difference between someone who keeps buffering and someone who doesn't. It's not about paying for faster internet. It's about understanding the actual system. Here's what most people don't realize. Speed tests are designed to make your internet look as good as possible. They test under ideal conditions for just a few seconds, but streaming is sustained performance under real-world conditions with interference and competing traffic and hardware limitations. The people who solve buffering don't have better internet speeds. They understand that streaming is a pipeline, not a speed contest. Your data needs to flow smoothly from the streaming server, through your ISP's network, into your router, across your Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection, into your TV's processor, and onto your screen. Every step matters equally. You can have the fastest first step in the world. But if step three keeps dropping packets, or step five has a bottleneck, or step six is being throttled, you're gonna buffer, period. It's not actually about megabits at all. It's about consistency, latency, hardware capability, and whether your ISP is playing fair with your traffic. The raw speed is almost irrelevant, if any of those other factors are broken. 
these performance issues aren't personal failures. They're not about you having bad internet. They're predictable problems that emerge from focusing on the wrong metrics. But now that you understand what actually matters for streaming, you can fix the real problems instead of just upgrading your speed plan and hoping for the best. So here's what we've uncovered. Your Wi-Fi creates micro interruptions that speed tests never catch. Latency matters more than bandwidth for sustained streaming. Your hardware can bottleneck even blazing fast internet. ISPs sometimes throttle streaming traffic selectively. And that speed test number everyone obsesses over is measuring almost the least important factor in your streaming experience. The question isn't whether your internet is fast enough. The question is whether you've optimized the entire chain from server to screen. Because now you know that 4K streaming isn't about raw speed, it's about sustained, consistent data flow through multiple potential bottleneck points. Speed is easy to measure. That's why everyone focuses on it. But streaming quality is about stability, latency, hardware, and ISP practices. Those things are harder to measure. They don't show up in a single number, but they're actually what determines whether you buffer or not. So next time you're fighting with buffering, ask yourself this, am I focusing on my speed test results or am I looking at the actual system that delivers video to my screen? Because once you see that streaming is a pipeline with multiple links, you can't unsee it. And you'll stop wasting money on faster internet when the problem was never about speed in the first place.